So here's the situation. You have a patient on their way to your emergency department, and EMS tells you, In a situation like this, you need to think fast and know your common toxidromes, because pattern recognition in this situation could save this person's life. So let's talk about toxidromes. What is a toxidrome? A toxidrome is actually the combination of the words toxic syndrome. It was coined sometime in the 1970s by two pediatric physicians in an article titled The Unknown Poison. The quote went along the lines as this. Some common combination of manifestations, which we have termed toxidromes, can give a clue to the drug involved. In other words, toxidromes are used to describe groups of signs and symptoms that result from particular poisons. So let's break it down into the most common toxidromes, anticholinergics, cholinergics, ethanol and sedative hypnotics, opioids, and sympathomimetics. And yeah, I know this looks like a lot of information, so why don't we break it down and go one by one. So with anticholinergics, things like atropine, physostigmine, and diphenhydramine, the patient's blood pressure may be normal or elevated, they are tachycardic, respiratory rate can be variable, and their temperature would be elevated. Their mental status would wax and wane, their pupil size would be large and bowel sounds decreased, and you could expect this patient to feel warm and dry. Additionally, you would notice dry mucous membranes and possibly a large filled bladder retaining urine. With cholinergics, things such as the organophosphate pesticides, the patient's blood pressure and heart rate are variable, but you may see these patients breathing very fast. The patient's temperature is also unchanged. The patient's mental status will be depressed. Pupil size may vary, but bowel sounds would be hyperactive. You could think of these patients as secreting liquid from their body because they will be sweating, salivating, crying, urinating, having diarrhea, etc. With ethanol and sedative hypnotics, things like the benzodiazepines, your vital signs are typically all depressed. Mental status is also depressed, however, in the early stages, these patients may experience some agitation. The patient's pupil size can vary, bowel sounds decrease, and these drugs really have no effect directly on the skin. Another finding on physical exam is if you have these patients walk, they are typically ataxic. With opioids, things like hydromorphone, heroin, morphine, these patients' vital signs will typically be depressed across the board. Their mental status will also be depressed, or even sometimes unarousable. These patients will have small pupils, or classically described as pinpoint pupils. The patient's bowel sounds will be decreased, and you also may notice that these patients may be hyporeflexive. With sympathomimetics, things like amphetamines and cocaine, the patient's vital signs will be elevated across the board. In terms of their mental status, they will be very agitated or even aggressive. Their pupil size will be very large, bowel sounds hyperactive, and when you go to touch these patients, they'll be sweaty and moist. And because of their agitation, they may even have a slight tremor. And I know I included seizure at the end of sympathomimetics, but with any of these drugs at very high doses, it could lead to seizure, coma, and death. 